All right, so on the black algae, I'm attacking it with phosphate pads, uh, water changes, and plecos, but I still have it. So I have a strategy, and the strategy includes picking up some, some of those little catfish that I've heard are really good with black uh, bearded algae, and uh, they don't get too big, so they'll work out well for the 55-gallon. So let's head over to the aquatic crater and pick some up. And uh, I've got a strategy I'm going to use so I can actually have the black algae uh, munched up and worked on before I put them into the uh, the main tank, the 55-gallon planted. All right, let's go ahead and hit the road. Here at the aquatic critter. Let's go inside. When we go in the aquatic critter, you know we're going to look at some fish. Let's go ahead and check some out. Electric blue acaras were looking really nice. A little expensive, but not too bad. We had some very nice pearl grummies. Those might actually work in my tanks. The autos were in these two tanks. They were a little small, but actually good for what I needed them for. You also had some of the uh, Chinese algae eaters, but I've heard they can be a little aggressive. Look at this guy. Just a crazy looking catfish. Pretty sure they get pretty big. Lima shovel nose. These figure eight puffers were really, really cute. Came right to the glass, interacting with me. This one looked like it had a heart on his head. Very unique shape on that eight. I wanted some plants, and you'll see in the last section of the video why I wanted to pick up some plants to help me along with this project. This archer fish was living in a tank full of frogs. Really cool fish. Like an army of frogs. The archers, I, I believe, are the ones that can hit a fly with a stream of water. Rainbow fish was just beautiful. Real showstopper. Congo tetras, those are on the short list of fish. I'd like to add at some point to one of the aquariums, maybe the 90 gallon. Which fish uh, that I've shown you so far or that I'm going to show you, you think I should add to the tanks? Just let me know. Certainly Congo tetras are, are ones I'd love to add. VC-10s, probably the least placid of the Placidochromus. Very good looking fish. These were very, very tempting. Baby frontoses are just so, so cute. Do you know that they, uh, did you know that they lived to about 30? They lived 30 years, pretty, pretty amazing. This tank is like a, just a uh, bunch of eye candy, just a, like a color show full of guppies. These sharks were just really, really pretty. Rose line sharks. They get a little bit bigger than this. Very active. Check out these fish. You don't see these that often. Your paradise uh, gourmies. Very attractive fish. I think they do well in a community. Not sure if they need any kind of special water requirements. But a very good looking fish, very unusual fish. 
Blue Paradise Gourami. Not a bad price. I usually don't stop in the saltwater section, but boy, their corals were just really popping today. Really pretty. And I don't know who supplies them with their fire mouths, but they really routinely have the best looking fire mouths around. Little convicts. Look at these guys. They're red devils. They get pretty big. These caught my eye on the way out. These golden grummies. Absolutely beautiful. And of course, I can't leave without checking out their beautiful ray collection. All right, picked up four. Hopefully, there'll be a good, good little algae cleanup crew. Let's get them home, get them acclimated. Also picked up some treats for the fish, some bloodworms and some frozen krill and a little bit of live brine shrimp that all the fish love. So uh, that'll be their treat tonight. All right, let's head home. day in Nashville. Let's go ahead and get these uh, fish inside, get them floated, and get the frozen food in the freezer, and uh, let's get this black algae project underway. I have an empty 29 gallon. It's got a couple plecos in it, and I have floated the autos. Temperature is matched, so I'm going to go ahead and release them in the 29, and then I'm going to bring over some plants with black algae. You'll see what I mean here in a second. I just cut open the bag, run them through a run them through a net, and put them in the tank. This one got right to work. Very cute little fish. All right, let's get him some black algae to munch on. So let's start with this Anubius here. You can see it's got some of that black, black beard hair algae growing on it. So I didn't glue these plants to the wood. They're simply slipped inside of a, uh, an opening in the wood. So I'm hoping I can just pull it out and that the roots haven't You can see the roots have already become somewhat established. But I think I can still pull it out without damaging, without damaging the plant. There we go. Let's get the other one. If you take these Anubias and you trim back the roots, by the way, you will promote It'll promote, promote more uh, plant growth. The tip I got from Rachel O'Leary. All right, looks like there's two. Looks like there's a third one in there. Let's get all three of them out. What I have is a rock right here and a piece of fish line as you know, for those of you that don't know, Anubias don't need to go into the soil. They just need uh, they just need to be attached to something so they don't float around. So this guy can just go there. And then that should work. Just pull the fish line, tighten it up. Doing all this with one hand. 
so I can film. You can see the fish line right there. Just a little bit of clear fish line. And that's going to hold it in place right here along this rock. And then while I have it out, I'll give the roots a trim to promote some growth. I'll go ahead and drop it into, into that 29 gallon. Let's go ahead and uh, trim the excess fish line and some of those roots. Like I said, this will promote growth, hopefully some new growth. Don't cut the uh, rhizome. You see this, this right here? This is uh, this is like the main the main the main root, but it just stays out of the soil. These these roots can sometimes work themselves into the substrate. They don't have to be in the substrate. I like Anubius. Gives you a lot of flexibility. You can move stuff around. You can redecorate. But you can see the black algae on it. I'm not going to bother cleaning this off. I'm just going to put this into the 29 gallon and let the little autos go to work on it. All right, there it is. Get to work, buddy. One's over here working on the filter. There's one behind that cave. All right, let's see what kind of job they do on this. I'm counting on you. I picked up a plant that's similar to Anubias, but it's not Anubias. It doesn't have to be in the substrate. She has a little root ball down here. But this can be out of the substrate and it will live fine. So I'm going to use this as a temporary plant, just so it doesn't look really bare down here. And hopefully, hopefully this plant will not get covered in black algae or eaten by the uh, Buenos Aires tetras. I know they seem to like the they seem to like the leafy plants. There we go. Seems to be sending out root shoots from everywhere. Very interesting plant. Come on, whiptail. Whiptail's staying on the wood. So, so there's that. Leave that there temporarily. Well, 15 days to a month, I'll go ahead and... Uh, and bring the autos over. Okay, he's already working on it. Come on, get back on there. There we go. It's all yours, man. That's your treat. So have you tried autos in the control of black uh, bearded algae? Let me know in the comments below how that went, if they were uh, able to clean up your plants for you. The, uh, I'm using 
phosphate pads from the aquarium co-op. I've cut back some of the light. I have that light, light specific, um, that plant specific light from the aquarium co-op. I've cut that back a little bit. And of course I'm doing some water changes once a week just to remove some of the phosphate. And uh, let me know. Let me know if the autos worked for you. If you use anything else that worked on black, uh, on black algae, I'd really like to know about it. And uh, hopefully these little autos are gonna do a good job for me. And then in about 15 days to 30 days, when they're done with quarantine, assuming nothing comes up with their health, I'll go ahead and move them into the 55, all four of them, and just let them go to town on the whole tank. Stay tuned for a follow-up. I'll have a follow-up for you within a month on how they did on that, uh, on that plant in the quarantine tank. That's it for me. I'll see you on Saturday at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. And uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And that's it for me. Bye, my friends. See you again soon. Bye-bye.